filters in landscape photography. Big topic that I haven't really tackled before. Now in this video I'm going to talk about the four filters I use in my setup. What I use, why I use them, what scenarios each of them are particularly suited to, and I'll try my best to put them in some sort of rank order of importance. Now, I live on a tiny damp island in the middle of the Irish Sea, so needless to say, water plays a big role in all of my landscape photography. So my viewpoint on filters is very much shaped by my environment here. The number one filter that is more important than any other is the circular polarizer. This, I couldn't live without it in my landscape photography and it's on my camera maybe 80% of the time. Um, so it's pretty damn important. Now, the thing about a polarizer is it has many different strengths. The primary reason to use a polarizer is that it helps remove and mitigate against glare and reflections within your scene. Um, which sounds really dull, but trust me it isn't because it can have profound impacts on how an image is rendered. For example, water surfaces, it can help take the reflection off the surface of the water, allowing your camera to pierce through that water and see the texture and detail and essentially what's going on underneath that water surface. It can also help remove reflection off rock surfaces, for example, so allowing you to see the, the texture um, in those rocks. It can also help remove the sheen from vegetation, which can help actually saturate and reveal the true colours in that vegetation rather than just seeing the reflections on their surface. Polarizer filters also cut out between one and two stops of light on average, which is fantastic because it allows you to potentially lengthen your shutter speed just long enough to be able to capture a little bit of dynamic movement within your scene, which can often, in my experience, really enhance water-based compositions. So very much, I find the polarizer is a match made in heaven when shooting water-based scenes because it will take reflections out, deepen the contrast and allow you to get that beautiful dynamic movement. But it's a very versatile filter because it's got so much more to offer than just that. You can use the polarizer when shooting non-water environments. It's very good at deepening the blues in the sky and making clouds pop and also cutting through a degree of atmospheric haze as well. So. This is primarily why this stays on my lens the vast majority of the time because in my experience it helps clean up the light in your scene and generally enhances the vast majority of landscape photography compositions. It also has to be said that polarizers are awesome for woodland photography and a key point is that the effect that the polarizer gives you can't be replicated in post-production. A lot of the other filters that I'm going to talk to you about can be. So this makes this absolutely irreplaceable and the one filter I would choose above any other. But it would be a mistake to say that you should just leave this on your lens all the time. That's just not the case. There'll be plenty of circumstances where you want to capture reflections in a scene where it's detrimental to use this, such as a mirror-like reflection in a water surface, for example. Um, sometimes also the ND properties of the polarizer can be detrimental. Plus, also if you're shooting a clear blue sky, you can get absolutely horrific banding when using these. My second favorite filter is the free stop ND filter. And this is a filter that I think doesn't get anywhere near enough love within the landscape photography community. But for me, it's my favorite ND filter. And this is primarily shaped by my love of shooting water environments. Now, sometimes the ND light reducing properties of the polarizer itself just aren't enough. So if you're shooting in a non-shaded area or brighter environments, kind of away from trees, for example, that one or two stops light reduction in the polarizer just isn't gonna be enough to get that movement in the water, to get those shutter speeds of quarter of a second, third of a second, half a second, maybe even a second, that sort of region. It's just not gonna be enough. And in those circumstances, that's where adding on the free stop ND will allow you to lengthen out that shutter speed and get the perfect water movement within your composition. 
Having one of these in my filter kit gives me a great deal of versatility when shooting water-based environments. And I think it really comes into its own when shooting seascapes actually, um, because quite often shorelines will be non-shaded, well-lit areas where the polarizer itself probably in most circumstances isn't gonna have enough ND light reduction properties to slow your shutter speed sufficiently. Popping one of these on will allow you to catch a really dynamic wave movements as they crash against the shoreline, capturing that water at that magic area between quarter of a second and one second, allowing you to capture that movement but also retain some detail in that water. For me, they're absolutely fabulous for that type of photography. My next favorite filter is the 10 stop ND filter, which I don't think my camera is gonna stand a chance of seeing through that one. So even when you stack your polarizer and a free stop ND filter, for example, the very most that you're likely to get in shutter speed is a handful of seconds. You're not really gonna get beyond that. And sometimes that just is not enough to create the desired effect within a scene. That's where these stronger ND filters really come into their own and the 10 stop cuts out a huge amount of light, it really does. Now the creative effects that this allows you to access is it allows you to polish off water surfaces and remove the detail entirely from them. It also allows you to capture dynamic cloud movement as clouds race across the sky. Also potentially allows you with very, very long short speeds to blur out people who are walking through a scene. Um, so it can be really, really useful to gain access to those creative effects which no other filter can give you. Um, I tend to find that um, I don't use the 10 stop filter all that much, but I could see why some people would probably put this top of the list because the creative effects it gives you are absolutely wonderful. It's particularly good for minimalist kind of shots. You know, those gray sort of dreary um, winter days. You can go to the coast, throw one of these on and you can get really striking images, particularly when they're black and white processed. And it can really elevate the skies within your scene as well by capturing those clouds as they come across a scene and it can really elevate a shot to another level. Because the 10 stop filter cuts out so much light, it makes it very versatile because you can throw one of these on even in the middle of the day in the harshest of light and it will help unlock creative ideas which can elevate otherwise quite uninspiring and boring scenes. So for me it's a very very powerful filter that I should personally probably try to use a lot more. The final filter that I have is a six stop ND filter, which I think the camera should be able to see through, yet yeah, just about. Now this filter, I don't use all that much, but having said that, I would still recommend people to have one of these in their bag, and there's two reasons for that. The first reason is that the six stop kind of emulates the kind of effects that you would get with a 10 stop. So sometimes the 10 stop is just overkill if you're shooting in lower light situations, for example, uh, dawn or dusk sort of time, or when it's very cloudy, kind of low light, uh, sort of dull sort of day, the 10 stop will just be potentially too much and your shutter speeds will get ridiculously long and really it can get a bit annoying. Having one of these in your bag gives you the versatility to throw one of these on in those lower light situations and unlock the same outcomes that you would get as you would get with your 10 stop. So by having a six stop and a 10 stop, you give yourself the versatility to pick the appropriate filter to unlock long exposure outcomes depending on the light that you're presented with. So that's the first strength. The second strength is that Sometimes free stop ND isn't long enough, whereas a 10 stop is too long. And a six stop sits just nicely in the middle, so it allows you to unlock a different type of water movement. So I particularly think they come into their own when you're shooting seascapes, where you're not trying to capture 
a dynamic foreground uh, of waves hitting a shoreline because that's where the free stop will really come into its own. But you don't want to polish off the water surface either. You're shooting water from a distance. You want to capture a degree of movement in that water surface and capture the textures that run through it, but you don't want to polish that all away. This is where the six stop really, really shines. Now, technically speaking, with any of those ND filters that I've just covered, you can actually replicate their effects in post-production. If you take a series of standard exposures, one after the other, stack them in post-production and average them out, you can effectively create exactly the same effect. But let's be honest, it's a bit of a ball ache and I've tried it before and it's just a lot of faff. So I would personally recommend just using the filters, it's just a lot easier. You may also notice that there's no ND grad filters in my setup at all. Um, and this is because I don't use ND grad filters anymore. Um, I've done a video dedicated to this subject, so I'm not going to repeat myself on that. If you're interested about my rationale for why I don't use them, click at the top now. In a nutshell, it's basically that I don't see the point in using them anymore. With the high dynamic range sensors that we now have in cameras and the powerful exposure blending post-production techniques that we have access to, I just don't see the purpose of it anymore. So that's my entire filter setup. It's relatively simple and straightforward. And for me, I never feel constrained by only having those four filters. I think they give me pretty much everything I'm looking for and I really, really enjoy the simple strip back approach. Now, the actual filter brand that I'm using now is the Case Magnetic filter system and it's something that I've only recently moved to about a month or so ago, maybe a bit longer. Uh, and I've used my fair share of filters over the years from different brands like Lee and Nissi, for example. Um, but for me, this case filter system is by far the best I've ever used. It is absolutely tremendous. Um, and I'll just walk you through a little bit of the, uh, the strengths of this system now. So here I've got my 24 to 70 lens and you can see the adapter ring for this filter system is just on the end. This is how you apply these filters. Ridiculously easy, isn't it? You just pop them on and off. Boop. So, so easy. And with these fantastic filter caps as well, you just pop them on there. So what I tend to find is here, I've got my uh, 14 to 30 lens and my 24 to 70. I've got the adapter rings permanently on the end with a filter cap on, and I just transport my lenses around like this and then Essentially in the field, I just need to pop out the filter I need and just pop it on the end just like that. And it is so unbelievably simple and straightforward and extremely quick as well. And for me, I would never go back to the faff of having to apply an actual filter system onto the end. I just... Personally, for my photography, I just don't see the point. These absolutely blow those other solutions away. The optics of these filters is fantastic with very limited color cast. I mean, I am colorblind, so I'm probably not the best judge on that, but from my eye, they look pretty damn good. Um, I'm using here the 95 millimeter um, filters, which on my uh, 14 to 30, do not vignette at 14 millimeters, whereas a lot of other filters I've tried do. Um, so getting that oversized filter uh, size just works beautifully with this lens. It really, really does. Um, I just think it's an absolutely awesome set. It really is. It's so lightweight and compact and small in my bag. Um, and yeah, I couldn't recommend it more. And also, I have to say, this is the, the filter pouch that it comes with. I've got all my, my filters kind of in here. And for a filter pouch, that is sexy. It is sexy. I never thought I'd say that about a filter pouch, but just look at it. It's, it's almost worth getting these filters just for the pouch. It's, whew, I love that filter pouch. The filters have a very, very slim profile. And this means that when you stack more than one, 
you don't get vignetting at 14 millimeters. Um, I haven't tried it with free, but I never need to use free uh, filters at any one time. So you can see I've got my circular polarizer on, just stacks right on top and it just works absolutely wonderfully. And it feels very, very secure. It's attached by magnets and that's it. But I mean, this is where it flies off now, but it's not going anywhere. And that, that counts for a lot because I've used a lot of filter systems in the past where I'm never 100% convinced that it's fully attached. Um, some of them can be quite flimsy, but this is an absolute rock. Now, if I was to have any critique about it and it would be very limited the only thing i would say is in this sexy pouch it's got four slots for my four filters it would be nice if there was just an extra slot to to put your lens caps or adapter rings spare adapter rings for example that would be nice and also when you're stacking more than one filter on the end the the lens caps don't really work anymore i mean they do go on but they just for me, they don't seem to stay on very convincingly. That's a little bit annoying, but you know, I'm splitting hairs here. These are really quite small uh, downsides. And for me, the upsides are absolutely incredible. And I would wholeheartedly recommend this filter system. It is, for me, the best I've ever used. If you want to find out more details on the case magnetic system or any of the filters that I've discussed in this video, you'll find details on that down below in the description. But that brings me to a close on today's video. I hope you've enjoyed this little journey through my filter kit. It's probably the kind of topic that I could probably talk for hours about, but no one wants to watch a four hour filter video. So I've tried to keep things to the point. Um, so thanks very much for joining me. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit that button below and I'll see you all soon.